Hello, and welcome to the YouTube channel for Vantage Point Networks. I'm your host, Scott Pickles, and today we're going to be talking about setting up Wi-Fi access for WPA1 and WPA2 Personal on the Motorola ES400 and MC65 using the Fusion Supplicant. As always, official supporting documentation for your Motorola ES400 or MC65 is available at support.symbol.com. Okay, to, to get started, I'm going to show you how to access um, the Fusion Supplicant or uh, wireless client configuration software on an ES400 or an MC65 from two different locations. Uh, first of all, most conveniently is directly from the taskbar at the top of your device. So if you just click on the top taskbar and drop it down, um, you can access the wireless manager and all the other components of the wireless Fusion from this icon right here. You might have to scroll to the left or right using the arrows at the end of the uh, taskbar, but uh, again, here's the icon right here for uh, the Fusion client. And the other way you can get to it is from the programs list. So if you go to the start menu and just scroll this list all the way to the bottom, There's the Fusion icon right there. It's called Wireless Companion here, but we know it as the Fusion icon. And you want to click on the Wireless Launch, and that will give you the same list of uh, commands. One thing that you might want to um, note, take away from this or notice from this is that you have the Enable Radio command right here. Um, if you go to find uh, wireless lands or begin a profile and you get scan adapter unavailable that probably means that your radio is off so here's an enable radio uh, checkbox I'm gonna hide the menu for now and go back to the task tray at the top and I'm just gonna demonstrate for you that error if you try and find wireless lands while the scan adapter is off or the wireless adapter is off you'll get this error so to rectify that, we need to turn it on by going to the Wireless Manager and select Wi-Fi to turn it on. And now we can do Find Wireless LANs again. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to show the two most basic uh, and most commonly used wireless uh, security mechanisms and that's pre-shared key and it's going to be WPA for Wi-Fi protected access uh, WPA1 or WPA personal 1 is uh, using TKIP or temporal key integrity protocol for encryption and WPA2 uh, personal is using AES encryption so you can see I have two SSIDs here that match those security paradigms we'll select the first one WPA TKIP and if you hold down your stylus until you get the right click option you can create a profile and a lot of these items here are going to be default for you making the entry and creation of a profile simplified one thing to note here um, the SSID name is case sensitive uh, so however it's entered with upper and lower case and spaces you need to be sure that you enter that exactly uh, here I'm just going to accept the defaults and click next for a profile name operating mode is infrastructure in most cases you're going to leave that alone other operating modes are ad hoc which we're not going to be concerned with here so leave it at infrastructure and click next again the uh, WPA mode is personal and what that refers to is the fact that we're most commonly using a pre-shared key as opposed to any extensible authentication protocols uh, such as PEEP or EatFast where we need either a certificate or a username and a password and just to show you the other options I'm going to drop this list down Again, we're using WPA Personal. WPA Enterprise refers to those extensible op options that I just talked about. Uh, WPA2 Personal and Enterprise refer to the use of WPA2 with AES encryption. Uh, just as a note, WPA2 is backwards compatible with WPA1 using TKIP encryption. But if you're going to go to the trouble of setting up uh, a WPA2 SSID, you're in most cases going to use the AES or stronger encryption. Authentication type, type is none. Again, we're not using any uh, advanced authentication types. You can see here that because we picked WPA, it's automatically uh, selected the, the TKIP encryption type. 
our pre-shared key is going to be passphrase. So here's one change from the default. The default is hexadecimal keys. We want to use uh, passphrase. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to unmask the character so that I know that I type it in accurately. And our key is VPN systems. And click next. For the addressing, in most cases, you're going to use DHCP. Uh, and DHCP will probably also provide you with your DNS server address, so I'm going to leave those uh, alone as default. And here's our battery usage mode. Uh, CAM stands for constantly awake mode and will uh, never put the radio to sleep. It'll draw the most battery power. Um, the recommended option is the default here for fast power save and then uh, max power save if you require it. Uh, will save battery uh, above and beyond fast power save, but you might find some performance um, hindrances there because it's uh, putting the, the radio to sleep a little bit more often to save that power. So that's the last step and we can click save. And you'll now see the, the profile that's been created appear here. The little uh, icon to the left means that that's the active profile and the blue key indicates that it's a, it's a secure as opposed to an open SSID in terms of its security. So did I get uh, a successful connection? Do I have an IP address? How do I know? Well, we're going to click the OK button, and I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to scroll down to wireless status. And click on that. And I can check my signal strength. I can see that I am associated and that I have a good signal strength. Uh, we're more particularly interested in this uh, signal level, the NEG54 dBm. That's a very strong signal. I'm going to back up and check the current profile that I'm attached to. It's the WPA TKIP uh, profile that we just created. Our IPv4 status will tell us if we have an address, and you can see here that I do. It was assigned by DHCP, and that my default gateway is 172.16.0.1, and that my two DNS servers are listed. Those, again, were given to me by the DHCP server. And finally, we can check the wireless log. The wireless log, in this case, is going to show that we were successfully connected. Um, but this is also a good troubleshooting tool if you're having issues connecting to your wireless network. Um, I often recommend to clear the log and have the auto scroll checked, and then just sit and watch. And it will populate the log with uh, uh, some helpful information that might assist in troubleshooting, such as association timeouts, authentication keys being incorrect, and things like that. And with that, I'm going to quit. And some other testing you can do is the wireless diagnostic screen. You can do an ICMP ping to see if you can reach your default gateway. You can see that the default gateway is uh, populated there already. And I'm going to hide the keyboard and just click Start Test. And you can see here under the total transmit and total receive that those numbers are keeping with one another in step, which means that all of my pings being sent out are also being returned. So I have uh, connectivity to my default gateway. And you can also see in this breakdown here at the bottom with the colored bars how much of my traffic is uh, being sent and received at 54 megabits, 48 megabits, 36 megabits, and so on and so forth. So that gives you some indication as to the performance of the wireless connection. I'm starting to run out of time here, so uh, I'm not going to go through the configuration and connection for a WPA2 with AES encrypted um, SSID. However, it is uh, much the same. Uh, the only difference is that you choose WPA2 personal as the encryption type as opposed to WPA personal. And again, you should step through the profile in the same way. For more videos, please visit our YouTube technical support channel, Vantage Point Networks. That's www.youtube.com forward slash user forward slash vantage point networks. Thanks for watching.